I am fortunate in my work to be able to observe snakes during times not only when they are resting, but also during times when they are naturally awake and active. I noticed that given the opportunity, they will move around out in the open to travel from one place to another and to explore, but that they tend to rest or sleep in spaces where they feel secure. This may be a dark hiding spot that no one can see them in or that they can't see out of, but what I actually observe more often than not is that they choose to rest or sleep in tight spaces and that visibility and transparency are not necessarily factors in their decisions about where to rest and what security means to them. Feeling that their body is secure may actually be more important to them than being hidden. This could be due to something called thigmotaxis. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, Taxis in biology refers to the motion or orientation of an organism in response to an external stimulus. And thigmotaxis then is a taxis in which contact, especially with a solid body, is the directive factor. In other words, a tendency to move toward physical contact with a solid surface. Liam Sinclair of Reptiles and Research has an excellent video about thigmotaxis and references studies indicating snakes are actually more likely to be visible and spend more time moving around the more clutter they have to navigate through. Not necessarily the more hides they have, but just the more things for their bodies to touch as they move through the space and the more potential hiding places or partial hiding places they have to retreat to as they move from one location to another. I encourage you not only to watch the video and read the studies for yourself, but observe your own snakes and see how they behave in a very sparsely furnished environment versus one that has tons and tons of clutter. Let's take a look at some examples with our own snakes here at Behavior Education. You've already had a good look at Bellana's enclosure, which is cluttered with stuff, both partial hides and full hides from top to bottom. So it fills not only the terrestrial space, but the vertical space as well. No matter where she goes in this enclosure, she has access to touch her body against something or between things and be totally or partially hidden. She obviously feels very secure because she's visible a lot. I noticed that versus these black plastic solid hides or similar hides, many of our snakes prefer hides like this. Now, is this because it's elevated? Is it because they have the ability to see out of it and be aware if a predator's approaching? Or is it just because it's a very tight space, a much tighter space than these more traditional types of hides? I'm not sure, but many of our snakes spend time in places like this. This is like the epitome of an example of thigmotaxis. This snake is squished between the substrate barrier and the door of her zen habitat, and she's here a lot. She is completely visible to everybody, and she can completely see around her. However, her body is pancaked between these two layers of plexiglass, and she spends a lot of her time resting or sleeping in this spot. So she obviously feels very comfortable, safe, and secure here, so it isn't necessarily that she needs to be hidden. She needs to feel safe. Here's another example. This snake has multiple hides that she could be in that are pretty spacious, but she chooses the majority of her time to be on this elevated shelf that is very, very close to the top of her enclosure. I find her here more often than any place else. So again, we might ask, is it because it's elevated and she prefers to be off the ground? Or is it because it's a tighter space than what she has access to in these more traditional hides that are a little bit more roomy? This is an example of a sparse enclosure because I've taken things out of it for the purposes of this video. And this snake has three hide options here. And she more often than not chooses the one that you see her in now. It has transparent sides and a partially transparent lid, but it's the smallest hide in the enclosure. 
She has a hide on the bottom that is completely concealed other than the doorway. She has a hide in the middle that is also completely concealed other than the doorway. And it's a little bit smaller than the black one, but it's a different color, it's light tan. And then she has this one on top where she is the majority of the time. So does she choose to spend the majority of her time in that particular hide because she can see out, because it's the smallest and the tightest space, or because it's the highest? Let me know in the comments what you think. I'd also like to hear about if your snake is visible most of the time, hides most of the time, and where they choose to spend their time when they're awake and active versus when they're sleeping or resting. Do they spend most of their time visible or partially visible? or do they spend most of their time hidden? And even when they're hidden, are they partially visible where you're able to see them? I'd also be interested to know if your snake has an enclosure with lots of stuff in it, lots of clutter, or if it's fairly sparsely furnished, and if you think that makes a difference in your snake's behavior. Let me know about your own observations in the comments. I am legitimately interested in snake behavior and observations from keepers like you help me catalog behaviors, and help me compare what other people are observing to what I observe here. Enough about snake spaces. Now we're gonna switch over to a snake hack that I have for you. This is just a really quick suggestion. If you have large water features, large water containers that you need to clean frequently, I use a shop vac, just a small one that I keep in the house. That way I can suck all of the water out of the container first, all of the dirty water out. And then I can clean the container in the enclosure without removing it, or once the container is empty, then it's much easier to take the whole thing out and clean it and then replace it and fill it with water pitchers versus trying to wrestle a very large water container that's partially filled with water and heavy out of a very tight space. And I have some enclosures that I actually can't even get the water container out because I have logs and other things affixed over the top of them. So the shop vac is a lifesaver.